Hey guys, what's up? Fuller here. Welcome back to the channel where we talk about meta sounds and Unreal Engine audio and hashtag composer life and all that good stuff. So I am very excited because Unreal 5.4 just dropped and it has what I think is probably the coolest uh, most exciting upgrade since MetaSounds, and that is the Harmonix plugin. That's right, Unreal 5.4 now includes native MIDI capabilities right inside the engine. If you're a composer or a sound designer and you've been working in the Unreal Engine, you know how exciting this is. I'd venture to say that if you are in the audio realm or composing realm, that there's probably a 100% chance that you are currently using MIDI. So to be able to use MIDI inside the Unreal Engine is very exciting. So I'm gonna do a series of videos. The next few videos, I'm gonna cover this plugin in depth, the Harmonix plugin in 5.4. I'm gonna show you what it's all about, how to use it, and some uh, cool little features and ideas uh, about that plugin. So please make sure you like and subscribe. Click that bell so you also get notified when the new videos drop. Uh, what we're gonna do in this video, part one, we're gonna talk about just the MIDI basics, get you up and running on how to play MIDI inside the Unreal Engine. In video two, I'm gonna talk about the Fusion Sampler, which is the built-in sampler that now comes with the Unreal Engine, which gives us all sorts of cool creative possibilities. In video three, I'm gonna dive deep into the step sequen sequencer and show you how you can build your own sequences right inside the engine and not even have to use external MIDI files. In video four, we're gonna look at output watching and how you can do some cool stuff to interact with your meta sounds and your MIDI to do some cool in-game uh, in actions. And then in our final video, I'm gonna show you just some practical ways to use this feature and some creative things you can do with procedural music and all of that stuff. So without further ado, let's jump right into part one of the Harmonix plugin in Unreal 5.4. Okay, so we're basically um, going to show you, I've got a blank session here. The only thing I have in my engine right now is this uh, Flight of the Bumblebee MIDI file. And if you want to follow along to this tutorial, you can actually download this file. I put it in the link of the video, the description of this video. You can download this MIDI file so you can kind of play along, play along follow along with us at home and uh, try this out for yourself. That's the only thing you'll need. Everything else we're going to do inside the engine. You can pretty much use any MIDI file that you want. Um, I will say that some MIDI files uh, don't cooperate as well as others. It depends on how it was bounced, how it was rendered. Um, uh, so this file is just one track, just piano, um, and, a, and a tempo map. So that's basically all you need to, to get rolling. So if you download a random MIDI file from the internet and it doesn't work, uh, it's probably the way the file is set up. So you can explore that a little bit more. Um, but yeah, so I've... I found that some MIDI files work, some don't. So you just kind of have to play around. Uh, okay, so uh, if you right click on the content browser and go under audio, you will now see Harmonix as a folder and you will see MIDI step sequencer. This is the only thing available in the content browser. And we're gonna talk about this a little bit more in video three. But for now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do everything inside a MetaSound. So we're gonna go to audio. We're going to create MetaSound source and just call this Harmonix part one. That's our meta sound. I'm gonna double click on this meta sound and I'm gonna get rid of the unfinished node. And now we're looking at a blank meta sound graph. Oh, also PS 5.4 has some really cool audio insight stuff that's brand new. I might dump into that in another video. I'm not gonna really talk about that now, but you'll see the stuff over here to the right. That's kind of what that stuff is. Okay, so. How does this all work? Well, if you right click on your MetaSound graph, now you're going to see under functions, you're gonna see this Harmonix folder. And PS, thank you Epic Games and Harmonix for developing this plugin because it's awesome. This is also the plugin that's driving Patchworks in Fortnite um, uh, to do all the really cool uh, on the fly synth stuff. And uh, I'm sure they did some other stuff and some other code, but this is kind of like the basic cornerstone of that. Um, we can now do some of that stuff on our own. So if you look under harmonics, you can kind of ex just explore a little bit and see everything in here. There's a, some analyzers, there's a, a delay, uh, there's a distortion, there's some filters, there's generators to sync the fusion samplers, there's the fusion sample player. 
There's a transport wave controller, which comes in handy. We'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, we've got uh, LFO, um, audio rate LFO, and a block rate LFO. And then we've got a debug. And then we've got, here's all the magic stuff, all of this cool musical MIDI stuff. And then we'll, we'll, we'll talk about some of the stuff, some of the stuff you can just kind of play around with yourself. Um, but what we're going to do essentially with MIDI is... Uh, what is a MIDI file? A MIDI file is basically just ones and zeros, basically. It's just information, almost like a spreadsheet of a song. And MIDI information, uh, note ons, note offs, how long the notes are, what pitch they are, uh, when do they happen. And that that's all just information. So MIDI file has nothing to do with audio. It's just information of when things would happen. Uh, basically like sheet music, if you will. Sheet music isn't the song. It's just what you would play if you wanted to hear that song. So MIDI information is kind of the same way. So the way MIDI works is you have a MIDI file and you need something to play that MIDI file, and then you need something to take that MIDI information and convert it to audio. And so that's basically what this plugin is allowing us to do. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna right click on the Metasound uh, source graph, and we're gonna go down to functions, harmonics, and we're just gonna get, under music, we're gonna get this MIDI player. And right here, you got a MIDI player. Now, this looks very similar to the wave player that we've been using in our meta sounds, but this is a MIDI player. Then we're gonna go over here to click MIDI file, and we're going to have, oh yeah, I did I have another MIDI file here, my head a little M. We're gonna click on Bumblebee MIDI, and now this player is gonna play this MIDI file. But that's not gonna do us any good right now because we need to turn it into music. How do we do that? Okay, so when this MIDI player is playing after it starts, which we'll do in a second, it's going to generate a MIDI stream. Now, what is a MIDI stream? A MIDI, so a MIDI file is basically all of your MIDI information for the whole song in a sheet, basically. Basically, just information. What the MIDI stream is gonna do, it's gonna start a clock and it's gonna stream that information out in sequence in the order that it happens in the song. So beat one, beat two, beat three, and so it's gonna stream that information out. So what we need to do is we need to take that stream, we need to read that stream and turn it into audio samples. This is where the Fusion Sampler comes in. So we're gonna right drag off MIDI stream, we're gonna type Fusion, and we're gonna type Fusion Sampler. There's a stereo and a mono, we're just gonna do mono for now. And then we're gonna hook this up to our output of our MetaSound. So what this is doing is we're getting our MIDI stream, we're converting it into samples, and then we're outputting that audio. Now, you have to pick the sound you want because this is going to be a piano sound. I'm gonna click piano. What's really generous of Epic Games is that they've offered us some basic sample patches. So we've got strings, vibraphones, etc. So what this is gonna do is this is going to trigger piano samples based off this MIDI stream. So we're gonna use a piano because Flight of the Bumblebee is a piano piece. And well, this version is. It's uh, originally for violin and it's really cool. Uh, but we're just doing the piano version. Okay, so we got that. Um, there's some other details here you can click on and mess around with. So now we've got our MIDI player and our Fusion Sampler. Now, our MetaSound trigger is not going to connect to the transport because it's a different type of pin. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag out a transport and we're going to uh, grab this function here, trigger to music transport. What this is going to do is this is going to allow us to turn this MetaSound trigger into one of these functions. In this case, we're going to hit play. So now we have completed the MIDI signal path, if you will. We've got play, turning into a transport, triggering the MIDI file to play through the stream, and then it's gonna turn that stream into piano samples and output. Now when I hit play, we're gonna hear the song. Fingers crossed, here we go. All right, it works. So this is our MIDI file that's playing, and over here you can actually see the oscillator showing us what it's sounding like. It got a little bit of a curve here as well. Um, so that's pretty much all you gotta do to play a MIDI file. Now, one thing to consider is my MIDI file has a tempo map in it, but, but let's say it didn't have a tempo map in it or I wanted to change the tempo, how could I do that? Well, over here off MIDI clock, you can drive this MIDI file off of a different MIDI clock. So we're gonna drag out here, we're gonna go functions, harmonic, uh, MIDI clock generator metronome. So now we have this 
clock generator. And what this is going to do is this is going to override the MIDI information in here, and it's going to play this MIDI file, all that, all those node ons, node offs, you know, control uh, parameters, all that stuff, MIDI CCs. It's going to play that according to this clock. Now this song was originally at 120, so when I hit play, you'll hear no difference. But if I go here now, I can speed this up. Now let's say, hey, let's play you at 168. Now we're going to hear it faster. Perfect. And that's awesome. And you can pause it. You can come up here and you can drag an input here. Boom. Pause. Unpause. Oh, not. Need to continue. So we'll go play. Pause. Hear the sample <laughs> sustaining, which is really cool. Continue. Pause. So now you've basically created a transport to control the MIDI file. So there's a lot of, a ton of other really cool stuff we can do with this. I'm not going to get into this now because I wanted to keep this video fairly short, but I do, do want to show you one thing. Um, if we go over here to MIDI stream and we drag off here under gra uh, functions, harmonics, music, debug, we get this MIDI logger, which is really cool. And uh, MIDI logger, that sounds like a really good beer. A MIDI logger. Uh, this is the MIDI logger and when I hit play and we go over here to output log now we can see all of the information that's happening. So we're getting all of these uh, note ons, note offs. That's showing you everything that's happening. Note off, note on, what note is it, what velocity is at, what tick is it at in the audio thread. Um, so lots of cool stuff here. And you'll see in our future videos that we can take that information and do all sorts of crazy stuff with it using the output watcher and things like that. But anyways, I just want to kind of give you the basics of that. And uh, if you drag this into the level and you hit play, there you are. Walking around, looking at all my mini stuff. Boom. Pretty cool. So it's functioning as a normal meta sound now because we have been able to take the MIDI information and convert it to audio. Now, just for fun, let's change this patch. Let's hear it on a vibraphone. Pretty cool. Um, let's slow it down a little bit. Let's go 145 and let's change it to what else is in here? Let's go string pizzicato. Here we go. <laughs> All right, that's a little chaotic. Um, horns. All right, cool. So you get the idea of how, I mean, these aren't the highest quality samples, but they're designed to just get you up and running. So um, go back to vibraphone. Really cool. And you can do some other stuff too. You could come off MIDI stream and you could transpose it down if you want to. Um, and then let's transpose this down two octaves, negative 24 and then go to here. Now we're gonna be transposing that down. So we just drop the whole thing two octaves. Um, and again, this shows you what is possible with MIDI that is kind of impossible with regular audio because you'd have so many artifacts trying to transpose that and stuff. Um, but that gives you kind of an idea of how we can manipulate MIDI and do some really cool stuff inside the engine. So anyways, I hope this video was helpful. Please stay tuned and like and subscribe to the channel. Check out that bell for the next videos coming up in part two. We're gonna talk about the Fusion Sampler. Specifically, we're gonna talk about how we can make our own samples, uh, sample players. And then uh, beyond that, we're gonna dig deep into the step sequencer and some other cool things. So thank you so much for joining us. Hope this video was helpful and we'll see you in the next video.